Welcome back to Good Morning Kenya, this being a health Tuesday. Now, if I may just get back to you, Catherine, um, on the screenings that you are doing, the one that you've just uh, done recently in Narok, when you go for these uh, camps, do, do people openly come for the screenings or do you have to really try to get them out of their houses? Um, we have to mobilize a lot. There's a need for very high rate of mobilization, just creating awareness mm -hmm. and just let them know this is just uh, something to give them hope, just to, to check on their health status. Yeah, but for the, for the women, they are more receptive than the children. Mm -hmm. For the men, it takes a bit of time to convince them to come, on, to come for screening. But the story is changing. But I think a lot, a lot needs to be done. We need to do a lot of mobilization and sensitization. Yeah, it's harder to convince the men to come for the screenings? Yes, it oh. is. Yes. Could you be knowing the reason? When you talk to them, what do they say? Like, why, do, why aren't they receptive to that? Most of them won't talk a lot, but I think they just, uh, it's just about the ego and we don't know what to expect, what will happen if I have this condition, I'm the, and I'm the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. But we're telling them, we're trying to help you, just create hope for you, get a solution to what you're going through, the, you have a condition. So we just uh, come out here for screening and we will be able to diagnose some of these uh, conditions at an earlier age and mm -hmm. go through those surgeries. Yeah. There is hope. Yeah. Yes. Doc, why why do you think we are so afraid of screenings as Kenyans generally? Last time I went, I just just for screening, you know. And we as screenings. Um. Do with just because you hear so much, you see so much. Who's not scared of death? Mm -hmm. so, so when people hear that there's cancer is an increase or uh, you may have this condition it just appears and you die within 24 hours. So people are like, ignorance is bliss. It's better you don't know. Yeah. And, but oh, I still urge that as much as, and, and we're humans, it's good to screen. You'll be surprised. There's some conditions which many, if sorted out earlier, mm -hmm. you'd be so relieved and glad that you did because the sequelae is, is worse. And, and we should stop thinking about just ourselves. We should think about our families because you have breadwinners who will continue on running and doing the usual things and uh, not really keen on screening because they're scared. But they're not thinking about their family because if something happens and they get sick, their family is doomed because they're relying on him. So I think when they think about screening, let's don't just think about yourself and your fears, but face your fears depend on you. To make sure the future is sorted out yeah. in time and um on surgeries yes um many a times mm. when the doctor maybe um tells a patient that okay we need to do a surgery on you for this and that most of the times we see either the particular person who's being told that or the family members trying to find for solutions solutions you know they'll try ask the doctor do we really need this surgery and all is, is surgery a death sentence? Surgery is not a death sentence. Surgery is used for two main reasons, mainly for diagnostic, and number two, to as a last resort to resolve a problem. Mm -hmm. We always try as surgeons, and surgeons are highly trained to first seek non-surgical methods to deal with the problem. And if all fails, then you go in and do the surgical uh, intervention mm -hmm. to resolve the problem. Yeah. So um, uh, it's, it's not a death sentence. A lot of times people end up in surgery when it's too late. So it's like if you operate, if you don't operate, they'll die. Mm -hmm. But if you operate, there's a small chance they may survive. But like I say, it's a small chance because by the time you're coming, it's a bit late. So it's not a death sentence, but unfortunately people come rather late and you're doing a salvage operation just to make the patient comfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So so the solution is just getting diagnosed early. early yes. Yeah, that is what you're advocating That's what for. I'm advocating. Early screenings and just so that you get the di uh, your diagnosis early. early. Um, uh, back to you, Catherine. When you were in this um, camp, when you were there checking people's um, eyes mainly, then what? You know, when you, when you found out that there are those who have conditions 
that should be um, looked at. What was happening exactly? If you could just um, tell me a bit about that. Um, we would, the doctors were doing the screening, uh, checking on the major issues. Some of them were just minor bacterial infection, as the doctor said, mm -hmm. allergies, but if they're not uh, checked on, they develop into uh, complex situations. Mm -hmm. So they were given uh, medication, the ones which are not severe, and they're just uh, minor issues or, and might develop to major issues. The major cases were highlighted. They'll be going for, for the surgeries in Narok uh, next week when we're running the surgical camp. So we've had all, a mixture of, of all these. Some of them have been using the conventional medicine, traditional medicine. And some of them are almost losing sight. Yeah. So we encourage them just to seek medical attention. Yeah. And go for screening. Yeah. yeah. I had that um, there's actually a lady, one of the ladies, who claimed that she would use this mboga managu yes. on the eye. Yes. I mean, it just shows that sensitization yes. on this particular uh, matter is completely, it's like we're not doing much about that. You know, Doc, when you hear something like that, what runs through your mind to know that, you know, someone takes managu, that is what they use in their eyes when they have a condition? Yeah, it just shows the, the kind of awareness that is lacking. We have uh, the alternative medicine uh, doing the awareness campaign much better in the mainstream mm -hmm. uh, medicine. And that is why, like I said, we are partnering mm -hmm. to change that narrative. Let's have more camps. Let's have more outreaching services. Uh, this should not be a one-off. It, not, not, it is not and it's not going to be a one-off. Mm -hmm. And that is why, like I said, these surgeons will be participating and personnel are doing it voluntarily. It's not for payment. We're providing our services and using that time to also interact with the local uh, surgeons there and the medical community mm -hmm. to share knowledge. Yeah, and it will be all over the country, not just narrow. Yeah. Yes. Who should come on board in order to make sure that this this is happening all over? Um, so far, we 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 are partnering with the various corporates, mm -hmm. other Rotary Club. Uh, NHIF are, are in this uh, this partnership. Mm -hmm. There are also other partners like, maybe you can mention some of them. Yeah. yeah. We have uh, the Naro County Referral Hospital, the government, mm -hmm. and the county government in Naro. We have other corporates coming on board as well, and we're appealing for more partners. The need is huge in the whole of Kenya, not only in Naro. Mm -hmm. And as the doctor said, we're going to other parts of Kenya to reach the people and just create hope to them. So we are appealing for more partners to join us in this noble cause. Yeah. yeah. Already other counties have also approached us yeah. and we talk with the county governments. Mm -hmm. So we're partnering wherever we're going, we're actually getting in touch with the local leaders or politicians so that's to make sure that it's they buy there's a buy in and we're able to sensitize all the members of that community. So it's a win win situation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well uh, what, if we, if I may just go back um, to the eye infections is there a reason why people who live in the Asal areas, arid and semi-arid areas, seem to be more prone to these eye infections? Um, maybe I can answer that. Yeah. Um, in this uh, semi-arid and dry areas, it's quite um, windy, dusty, water is a problem. So when you get all the such conditions, you end up getting a lot of uh, dirt mm -hmm. in the eyes, and then they start scratching, and then they start getting infection. And getting water to keep washing your eyes becomes a hassle. Mm -hmm. So they tend to be more prone to those kind of conditions, eye infections, compared to people who are not in the semi-arid areas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the I solution would be if you can provide enough water to wash your eyes and keep checking on them and getting treatment whenever you have a situation, you can drastically reduce some of these eye problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So water would be a solution to Well, uh, there are preventative measures, primary health care going around and tell, talking to them about the causes of their eye problems and how they should regularly uh, wash their eyes, clean them, and uh, seek relevant medication. Some could just be allergies mm -hmm. to prevent them uh, developing bacterial infections. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I want to get into the costs of um, um, some of these surgeries and all. Yes. Sometimes as much as maybe one may um, be shy of getting a um getting to get a surgery even when the doctor has really told them that they need that 
mainly it's not because they are afraid of it sometimes it's because they're looking at the cost well as difficult to, if you can pick a standard hernia surgery done on a local anesthesia um, the costs vary from place to place mm -hmm. but um, I'm sure you can get them as, as cheap as 10,000 mm -hmm. that's in a, in, a, in a county hospital or mission hospital and depending on the type of uh, hernia it is can go as high as even 200,000 mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. but uh, an average I tend to say 20 to 30,000 will be able to take care of a hernia for example but it depends on the, on the location, it depends on, 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 on the, where they're getting the services, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Does uh, insurance cover some of yes, these surgeries? Yes, NHF, surgery, NHF of covers procedures? most of this in the referral hospitals, mm -hmm. in the county hospitals, in some mission hospitals. Mm -hmm. It covers most of this. So people uh, who are registered in NHF usually don't have to worry about the costs, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Catherine, as the Rotary Club of uh, Masai Mara, um, will you be doing this with a surgical society always and um, maybe where next are you planning to go? Yes, we'll be doing this with them. We'll be partnering with them going forward and we'll be letting you know where we're going next by December. Mm -hmm. Yes, but we are planning to do this in the span of up to 10 years, which is many people as possible in different counties. Mm -hmm and partner with as many counties as possible, many stakeholders, many opinion leaders. We, we are appealing for your support so that we run this noble cause yeah. together. Yeah. Are there specific people you're targeting or specific um, areas that you're targeting first? No, not, 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 not exactly. Mm -hmm. I already have three counties that have approached us to, mm -hmm. to, 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 to do a surgical camp in their county. But uh, we're still working out the modalities. Right now, next week, there's a hernia camp going on in collaboration with the Hernia Society of Kenya at the Coast General Hospital. Mm -hmm. And that will be running next week, I think, from Wednesday till Saturday. So wherever uh, we, we, we invited, wherever we can get collaboration, we go. We, we have the, the personnel. We have the, the they're able to find time and come and participate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's part of our mandate, and we're proud of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you can just, um, as we wind up, probably talk about um, some hernias that um, can be rectified, uh, probably for someone who's watching and they know they have one of the, uh, one of them right now, and they just want to know: is it something that can be rectified? Okay, I'll I'll I'll, I'll just use two words: all hernias can be rectified. Mm. Just come forward. Okay, there's no hernia which cannot be rectified. Provides a hernia. So come forward, we diagnose it, and to be rectified. Mm -hmm. If you want to know the names of the hernias, the umbilical hernias, parambilical hernias, incisional hernias, inguinal hernias, femoral hernias, obturated, there are many hernias, ventral hernias, we can sort it out. Yeah. Just come forward. Yeah. And the only way for them to be rectified it's is surgery. through surgery. Unfortunately there's for no hernia, it's surgery. That there's no medication that someone can, no. you know, take and maybe it just melts away. There's a hole, and the way to treat that hole, previously we used to stitch it, mm -hmm. but if you stitch it, it will tear. Sometimes the switches cut through if the wall, the, the wall is weak. So what you do now is you put a mesh, and that should be able to sort you out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Catherine, your last words maybe to the people um, being someone who, you know, is taking up this mantle where you are trying to sensitize the community. You're trying to take it upon yourself to make sure that, you know, people know about, um, people get to know that they can go out there for screenings and just get to know how their health is. Maybe if you have a word for people out there. For the people out here, we encourage the local people to come for screening. We still have time before the surgical come. And just in other parts of Kenya, let's all go for screening. It's important for our health. Mm -hmm. When you have health, you have wealth. And for the partners, for the corporates, for the opinion leaders, we appeal for your partnership. Yes, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Patrick Shorts, Doc. Yeah. Um just, just a brief. As a president of Surgical Society of Kenya, I lead a band of courageous men and women in this country who work both in the private and public sector 
They tirelessly and skillfully use their hands to improve the community health. Their mindset is tailored to allow them to use their heart to provide solutions to the health problems in the community. Kindly, please, when you see a surgeon coming out of his way to help you to intervene and resolve your problem, be, be very grateful because these guys are doing that out of their heart, out of their own volition. And their mindset is very clear, they want to resolve your problem. So when these people come out there, come out in large numbers, take advantage of this situation where you have all these surgeons together so that your problems can be resolved and you can have a diagnosis of what, what's going on in your body. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us and shedding light on this conversation that we were having today on Health Tuesday. Now, this is where we call it a wrap right here on Good Morning Kenya. Thank you so much for watching. I have been your host, Vivian Dagwa. We'll see you tomorrow, same time and place. Bye-bye.